All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. I definitely had a lot of fun putting that video together. But those Japanese beetles, as most of you know, those Japanese beetles are one of the most destructive insects in the garden. And for those of you that grow roses like we do, know that it's a very tough insect to deal with, especially with tender new growth from those roses, because some of those roses attract more of those Japanese beetles and other roses. I know they attack more than over 300 species of plants, so it's a very tough insect to deal with. And they always come around June, July timeframe. The problem with Japanese beetles is they emerge from the ground as grubs. So it's very hard to get rid of them um, when the season starts because they're not just showing up, they're coming out from the ground. So some of the ways we deal with Japanese beetles is with a little bit of soap and water and we pick those off and put them in there or we buy some Japanese beetle traps. But the problem with traps is it tends to attract a lot more with those pheromones that cause them to those traps. So you start to get more Japanese beetles than you actually want to. So one thing that we use in this video, we had Bonite send us uh, a couple of different things and one of them was a Japanese beetle killer and I will tell you right now that it's much easier to just spray these guys and watch them just fall over and be done with rather than go in there and pick each and every individual one. I know Angie used to go out into the garden, pick them off, crush them. We were told the pheromones attract more. Don't know how much of that is true but this spray is definitely coming in handy when you can just go out there, spray them and be done with it rather than just picking them all off. So today we're gonna treat the garden with some other stuff. We have some other things that they sent us. Today we're gonna be using Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. I know this is a very popular um, product that a lot of people have used in their garden. And again, Bonite reached out to us. They sent us a couple of different things. So this is the one we're definitely gonna use today. One that we asked for was Rose Shield. It's a rose drench and that's definitely something we wanna try because we grow a lot of roses here. I know we have some other products that we try in the garden, but we're trying other things as well to give you guys the best options that are out there as far as when it comes to dealing with some of these diseases and insects. And we also have some thuricide as well, which is also known as BT. Uh, BT is one of those things that controls moth larvae, certain leaf eating worms and gypsy moths, another great product to use. And then another one that I asked for was infused. This is a systematic disease control, much like the rose shield. You pour this into the root base of your shrub, plant, whatever you're gonna use it on and it tells you what you can use it on. And this gets absorbed through the roots into the plants and protects it for a certain amount of time. All right, so it's getting a little bit darker. There's still some sun out, but again, you always wanna wait till it starts calming down a little bit. You don't wanna get these pollinators affected with any anything you spray in your garden, basically. These pollinators should be asleep, shouldn't be out in the garden. So you wanna spray when it gets a little bit later at night, so that way you're not affecting anything else in the garden. So we're gonna use Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew um, to spray the rest of the garden because we still have some other stuff that's coming out here. Um, we showed that um, that rose mallow, the hibiscus, that was getting attacked by sawfly because it was a very new tender plant and it got attacked pretty much. You'll see the difference between the young one and then the older one has no damage pretty much because we've been spraying it and taking care of it pretty much. Hummingbirds paying me a visit here, checking out what I'm doing. Um, don't know if you caught that, you flew off, but. Um, it's always fun to see this stuff here. And again, like I said, we want to wait till the pollinators are pretty much out and, you know, there's hummingbirds out. So we don't want to spray when it's too much light out and there's too much activity going on in the garden. So with this one here, uh, we're basically going to combine a gallon of this in our canister here. And for a gallon of this, it has the instructions in the back. We're going to use, let's see, this one, I believe it said four tablespoons per gallon. So I'm going to go ahead and treat the cap as a tablespoon, which is... What I normally do, if you want to get specific with your measurements, definitely use a, a measuring spoon or a cup for that matter. We're going to go ahead and use the cap as a tablespoon. I do about half. Pretty easy to measure it out, just eyeballing it. All right, so those are four tablespoons. We're just going to fill it up with some water, shake it up a little bit, and then we'll go out to the side of the garden, talk a little bit more about the products that they sent us and just spray the rest of our garden because it's something we definitely want to take care of. We always want to make sure we don't have any crazy insects or anything eating at our foliage that's going to cause more damage in the garden than we want to. All right, so I'm starting to spray the garden. The one thing you want to remember is to spray the top side and the underside of the plant that you're wanting to treat. In this case, we're treating every single plant in the garden, basically, and this is organic, so I'm not worried about it killing anything else or, or any runoff into you know, the ground or anything like that, but um, that's one thing you want to make sure you do is get a good sprayer. Make sure you spray the top side and the underside of all the plants that you're actually spraying because that's what's going to work the best. A lot of these insects like to hide on the underside of foliage. So going back to that video, yes, I had a lot of fun doing that video. And the reason I did that video, I had a lot of fun doing that video was because 
Every time we come out to enjoy our roses specifically, it seems like the biggest nemesis is the Japanese beetle. We seem to always spot it in places we don't want it to be. So I had a little fun doing that video. And you know, before I go any further, I do wanna say yes, this video is sponsored by Bonite. And we're glad that they sponsored this video because they reached out to us and asked us if we wanted to try out some of their products. And we said, yes, they let us pick whatever we wanted to pick. So we picked out some products that we thought would be more beneficial to our viewers, especially when it comes to growing the roses and then some of the other stuff we have in the garden. So we were ecstatic about being able to try these products in the garden. So yes, the Japanese beetle spray does work. It does kill the Japanese beetles. I purposely left that out of the end of the video because I thought it would be a lot more funnier just to see it uh, perform the way it was actually performing. So one thing I am beating myself up about is they asked us to select some of the products we wanted to try again. And one thing I forgot to select was they have a product called Grub Beater. And Grub Beater is gonna be probably the best product you can use to prevent Japanese beetles from coming into your garden because treating for grubs is gonna prevent them from even coming up at all. Now, mind you, you might get a couple that are still gonna come up, but it's gonna be a less amount of Japanese beetles that are gonna come into your garden. Here I am treating this hibiscus right here because this is the one that got attacked by soft light the most. There's a lot of damage going on on it, and we wanna prevent any other insects from getting on there. But going back to that grub beater, grub beater is one of those products we're gonna to wanna to try before the season even gets going. Late winter, early spring, uh, to get those grubs killed before they start to emerge as beetles. Now, not everything here in the garden is pretty. We always get comments how we keep stuff looking great, how we keep stuff looking green, disease-free, insect-free. Nothing here is always gonna be disease-free or insect-free. We do have some things that are taking damage from different insects, and that's why we wanna show these products to you guys. We do wanna thank Bonite for sending us this stuff because it's definitely gonna come in handy. The Japanese beetle killer worked great, as you saw in that video, but we wanna keep you guys updated on what we're using in the garden, how these products are gonna do in the future because I know our viewers have all those questions and we wanna answer them the best that we can and we can't answer them without trying certain things in the garden. So this is definitely a plus. This is definitely awesome to be able to try some of these products and see how they do in the garden. So once again, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't given this video a like, please give it a like and we'll see you guys in the next video.